doing something different this week. I asked you guys if you wanted to see a story time video. They have been super popular on YouTube and I still have a lot of untold travel stories. So you guys were enthusiastic, I'm enthusiastic. <laughs> enthusiastic. Let's do this. And I'm telling you my story in order to prevent you from making the same mistake because I thought I would never make this mistake, but I did and I almost died. So I hope this helps. This is what happened. I had a flight to China early in the morning, at, well, early in the morning, 12 p.m. and I was supposed to be at the airport at 10 a.m. Me, being a soul, I got inspired and I thought straightening my hair was more important than catching my flight. So I left the place where I was staying, I left too late and I arrived at the airport at 11.30 when my plane was boarding, yay! So I missed my flight to China. Luckily I was flying with a super nice airline and they booked me on the next flight and they also let me know that my flight to, um, because I was fly flying from Seoul to Qingdao, I, I hope I pronounced it well, and from Qingdao to Beijing. So they were so kind to let me know that my flight from Qingdao to Beijing was delayed. Awesome, awesome, winning in life. I was like, whoa, this trip started out really well. So I missed my flight, no worries, I have my laptop, I'm just working, la la la, there's awesome Wi-Fi at Seoul Airport, I get to Qingdao, no worries, my flight was delayed, I was supposed to arrive in Beijing at I think 6 p.m. My flight was delayed for like three hours. I was like 9 p.m. Awesome! Metro is still working because that's uh, something that I really take into account when booking my flights that I arrive quite early so the metro is still working and I can take public transportation. So I was like 9 p.m. Perfect! Metro is still working. This is totally working out. No care in the world. So I take the flight from Qingdao to Beijing and I arrived there at 9 p.m. Awesome! Customs working with me, everything is going all right. I get my backpack from the baggage belt. My backpack is always first. Seriously, I don't even not need to knock this on board anymore because my backpack is always first. So within 10 minutes I'm in Beijing. So the next thing I do, of course I have my backpack, I go to the train station because you need to take a train first and then get to the metro station and then switch to the metro and go to the stop where you need to be, right? So I get a met uh, I get a train ticket. Also, everything is going smooth. Things in Beijing are translated in English, so no worries over there. Chinese people, awesome, right from the start. Everybody's helping me. It's so cool. I'm so happy to be in China. Even though I was afraid before, I was like, no, this is going really well. This is my day, man. I get into the train. I get out at the stop where I need to transfer to the metro. I transfer into the metro. The metro is quite crowded because even at, I think it was at that point of time, I think it was 10 p.m. in Beijing and Beijing metro is always crowded. So it was still crowded. I meet some expats, uh, I think a guy from Kenya who was studying Chinese in Beijing, a guy from South Africa who was studying Chinese, uh, well, he was actually teaching English in Beijing, and I'm chatting, la 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 la, I'm having an awesome time, seriously, I'm so happy to have such a smooth arrival and such a smooth trip to Beijing. So at one point, I get out of the metro and I notice that I'm at the exact opposite stop of the stop where I need to be. So I need to be here and I'm here. Right. So now it's, I think, like 10, 15 p.m. or 10, 30 p.m. And I'm like, no care in the world. I just, you know, it happens. Like sometimes you just grab the metro in the wrong direction and you, you get to the wrong stop. You know, it's it's kind of inconvenient, but it's okay, I will just get the next metro and go a few stops back. I'm waiting there, I'm waiting there. And there's this um, Chinese lady, she's like nye, 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 in Chinese. And I'm like, I hate to say it, but I can't understand Chinese. And I'm like, uh, where is this metro? Because it's not coming. So I go up and uh, this security lady starts talking to me in Chinese. She's like, nye, 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 nye. I'm like, nope, still can't understand Chinese. So yeah, I, I try to go down again, but she stops me and she points at like some 
um, some overview. So I go there and this, this was like one of the suckiest moments in my travels. I um, somehow like with the times I managed to find out that that was actually the last metro to this stop and there's no metro going back. At this, this point, I think it's 10.45 or 11 p.m. I landed in China, nobody knows that I landed. There's no metro going to the stop where I need to be. And I hate cabs. I honestly hate them with a passion because I got scammed one time in Hungary and it was so scary. So I'm like, okay, so I'm going to either spend the night at this metro session, station in Beijing, which doesn't feel really safe as an option, or I'm going, going to get over my fear, step outside and be scammed, buy a taxi, which is completely fine at this point because you're definitely going to get scammed if the metro is closed and it's 11 p.m. How are you going to get to the location? You know, your negotiation position is not that good. So this is one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my travels. I didn't look up like the taxi information in a city because if I would have known that, I wouldn't have made the following mistake. So what I do is I walk out of the metro station. I'm not freaking joking. There's a group of 20 guys that almost come running at me. I'm not freaking joking. I'm like, <gasps> this is how Will Smith felt when he was acting in I Am Legend, I'm like, what the F? And I just walk back into the metro station, like counting on the security to kind of, you know, look after me or something if these guys want to attack me, I don't know. So there's this one guy, he looks like the leader of the group. And there's, at this point, there are like seven or eight guys standing around me because, because the other, the rest of the group stayed outside. And I'm like, okay, so if I just grab the leader, he'll probably tell the other ones to just leave. So like in my fiercest voice, I tell the leader like, listen, I will only negotiate with you if the other guys leave. And I'm looking at the other guys and I'm like, you need to leave and you need to leave. The complete opposite of Oprah. <laughs> you need to leave, you need to leave, you need to leave. I'm only talking to him. So he's like, they all start to laugh because, you know, I look hilarious at this point. And um, so he tells them, like, you need to go because, yeah, I'm going to negotiate with her. He was kind of the leader of the group already. So we start negotiating. And of course, he gives me some awful price, of course. And then I, for me, it's like, I have one goal. I need to get something off that price just for my own, you know, just to feel good about myself, you know, that I at least negotiated a little bit. So we negotiate a price, which is something about, I think, if I can remember, something like 15 or 17 euros. At this point, I'm like, hashtag care that I'm being scammed. I just need to get to the location where I need to be, which is very naive. So we step outside, he takes my backpack. There's still like this ginormous group of guys and I'm like, don't think too much because otherwise I will just crawl into a corner and sleep over there or something. So we step outside and at one point when we reach the street, I look to the left and I see this whole line of legit taxis. So the thing is, I'm crossing the street, I'm thinking, why am I doing this? What am I doing? Like, who is this guy? Why am I letting myself be scammed. Why am I not just walking to a cab? This, this is all what's going through my head as I'm crossing the street. And when I look across the street, there's like this line of cars parked there. And there's this one scruffy little car, like super old, like it's almost falling apart. And I'm like, nah, it, it's not gonna be that car, right? Like all the other cars look like normal cars and everything, there's this one car. And he walks towards that car. And I'm like, no, seriously, what the heck? This is like one of those, you know, those comedy movies where everything goes right and then it all goes sour. So I walk, I follow him towards the car and I'm like, this, this is hilarious. Like at this point, I, I, I start a little bit laughing on the inside. Like this, this cannot be true. So he walks towards his car. 
he opens the door, he starts shoving my backpack, and I'm like, F no, I'm not getting into this car. So I shout, like from the top of my lungs, no, stop! <laughs> he looks at me like I'm a mad woman. He's like, in Chinese, something like, probably like, what are you saying, what are you doing? And I don't know what got into my head. I don't know why. I'm like, okay, and I get into the mother flipping car. Like, seriously, cursing is needed for these kind of moments because that's seriously the dumbest thing you can do as a single traveling woman. I get into the car, and as soon as I hit the door, I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? He starts the car, he starts driving, and I'm like, that's it. I'm gonna die. That's it. Like, he can literally take me anywhere. Nobody knows I landed in China. Nobody knows where I am. Nobody knows I got into his car. Nobody has seen me. The only guys I've seen were the guys on the metro that I spoke to. I'm gonna die. He, he, my life is literally in his hands. And as we're driving, I just like this, you know these cold chills that you get when you, when you like, when you honestly feel there's something life-threatening, I get those chills. And the only thing I can think of, the only way to save my life at this point is to make this man like me, to make, me, to make him like me as a person. So I start chatting to him, so have you been doing this for a long time? His English is quite bad and he's quite, he's not in a talkative mood. Um, it, like I try like three or four times to get him to talk to me, but it's not working. And I'm like, he probably doesn't want to get attached to me. Like if he's taking me for, um, if he's going to sell me for uh, human trafficking, if he's going to rape me, if he's going to murder me, He's only thinking about that and he, he doesn't want to like me. And as we're driving, and this everything like happens simultaneously, so I'm talking, trying to talk to him, I look outside and Beijing is looking so gorgeous. Like these tall buildings and we're driving right in the midst of them and all the lights and I don't know why, but that night the sky was clear. So it was such a bizarre, gorgeous sight. And at the same time, I literally thought, thought, this is the moment I'm gonna die. So for the next 20 minutes, like at one point, I like I think after 10 minutes or something, I stopped talking. I was like, I need to pray. And I started praying. I was like on the inside. I I not like I don't practice religion on a daily basis. I I don't go to a church or a temple or whatever. I don't have one relig religion. I always say like my re my religion is love. But at this point, I'm like, seriously, Jesus Christ, God, Jehovah, Allah, um, Lakshmi, Buddha, anyone who's listening, help me out, seriously. I'm telling this <laughs> in a very funny way, but to be very honest, that was the moment I, I really thought that I was gonna die. And I'm praying and I'm like, if I if I need to die at this moment because that's right, okay, I'm a piece of that. But to be very honest, God, whichever one is listening, I had a lot of plans with my life and I honestly think that I can contribute to this world in a positive way. So if you're able to help me and if you're willing to help me and if you have a little bit of time, help me. And I was just praying at this moment. I've given up on talking to this man. And I'm like, I just hope this is a good guy. And at one point, I see like the 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 sign of my metro station where I needed to be and I'm like he's a good guy and he got me to the metro station where I needed to be and I even offered him extra money to get me to uh, to my accommodation and he was like nah this is far enough I made enough money on you <laughs> something like that so he just dropped me at that metro station and I was like just like I don't know, I don't know. I was just like still in survival mode because I'm still outside in Beijing. Like, like, like now it's like 11.30 p.m. And I just start walking, hopefully in the right direction. I see McDonald's, hallelujah, McDonald's saves me every time. There's like a group of young people in front of the McDonald's. I ask them, do you know this accommodation? And one girl's like, sure, yeah, I need to go in that direction anyway. So if you just 
wait a little bit for me because I need to get my food, then I'll just walk you to it. And I'm like, right at that moment, I'm like, China, I love you forever. Thank you for having good people in your country that I encountered. The girl got me to my accommodation and I was in my bed and I was like, you lucky mother effer. You literally just survived because someone up there was like, yeah, you can remain living. So I, I never told the story on camera because it's just too long to tell it properly. And also I was really sh shaken up that something like that could happen to me because I'm not, you know, I'm not a naive person. I've read about this a lot and I was just, I think I was just on a high because everything was going so well that day and everything fixed itself that I thought like I was kind of invincible or something. And in that moment I realized that life is so fragile and it just takes one stupid decision to throw it all away. So I hope this story <laughs> makes you aware that you always need to, you know, Get that information when you're going to a new country about how the taxi systems work, where you, you know, where you can get a taxi and if there are legit taxis and stuff like that. So now I never, never leave to a new country without knowing like the public transportation options, but also the taxi options, train options, whatever else I need to know uh, because that experience taught me well. So. If you like this story and this video, please give it a thumbs up. I know I am dumb, you don't need to state the obvious in the comments. I do realize this is the dumbest decision I have ever made in my life. But um, I really hope telling this story helps someone else. And yeah, so if you're subscribed, that's awesome, you rock. If you would like to see more of my videos and hear more stories, then click that button and then I'll see you again. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.